Hey y'all, it's my review for the Merida Medicine Season 9 Reunion Parts 2 and 3. So we left off on Andy asking Anila a simple yes or no question. Do you believe that Toya had anything to do with your house being robbed? I don't know why it took her so long to say no. Like, girl, even if you do believe it, just lie like these other reality stars do. Take a lesson from Mia from Potomac because she lies with ease. Anyway, I still can't believe that her house was robbed again, three months away from this reunion. So the next reel is dedicated to the doctors on the cast being doctors. Then we get a little PSA on the importance of black OBGYNs. They're definitely educating Andy because he didn't know this information, you know, how black women are more likely to die during childbirth. Now, y'all know this hits home for me since, you know, my cousin recently died. Very sad, but this is definitely a problem problem for black mothers to be. And I fully believe this issue should get more attention. We later found out that Audra couldn't make the reunion because she was super pregnant, about to give birth at any moment. Dr. Jackie indeed turned out to be her OBGYN, like she said in the season finale. Fun fact, I also heard that Dr. Jackie is the most sought after black OBGYN in the city of Atlanta. That is amazing. We then get a PSA from the doctors in the cast regarding Roe v. Wade, and you know what? I am fine with that. I love that they give us substance as well as the mess. Next, we see all the husbands arriving to the location. They're getting ready to go on stage. We're back with the ladies, and now we're on Toya's reel for the season because she's had the most drama. I don't know why she's not sitting the closest to Andy, but I'm guessing Jackie and Simone are like still the faces of Married to Medicine. So the first question Toya gets after this reel is, why did she sell the house? It looks like she sold the house to get a profit, even though it was her dream home. So then Messy Andy asked Heavenly her opinion on this, and shady ass Heavenly, she was just like, well, I fully support people having to pay their bills, and she had to do what she had to do. Toya goes back and forth with her because Heavenly is alluding to what Audra said about Toya and Eugene's liens that they had on the house. According to Toya, she don't owe nothing, but it's on public record. So even though she gave Andy the receipts of what she made on the sale of her home, I'm sure she still had to, you know, pay those liens. Toya's then asked about her relationship with Eugene because she did complain a little bit about it during the season. And she was saying that, you know, she felt alone sometimes. And she starts getting emotional and Andy's asking her, well, do you still feel that way? She gets a little choked up, but Simone helps her out and says, it's not as bad as it was. You know, there's still problems and hey, marriage is work. Maybe that's why the divorce rate is so high because it's more work than actual fun. But hey, if you are married, more power to you. It's just not for me. We then see the husbands backstage watching the women on set. And of course, Eugene is upset seeing Toya in tears. Jackie then provides her two cents on Toya's situation. And she says that Toya doesn't really listen to what the other ladies have to say. Toya then accuses Jackie of not really checking in on her, not picking up the phone. And I can totally see Jackie's perspective on this. They're not cool like that. I'm pretty sure like once the season wraps, she don't talk to Toya like that. So why would she get into her marriage? That's just like me hitting up people I don't really rock with like that and asking them, oh, how is your relationship doing these days? You know, it's weird. It feels like a conversation you should have with someone that's more closer to you. So now we get to the drama at Quad's party and then the rumor about Toya sleeping with somebody in the neighborhood. Quad, of course, is the one that perpetuated the rumor. So then she says she heard the rumor from Heavenly and Heavenly heard it from Simone. Simone, of course, says that's a lie and I don't believe Quad. I don't. Quad then says it initially started with all the women in Toya's neighborhood gossiping about her relationship. Then she proceeds to throw Anila under the bus for knowing about this. I mean, she's just taking no accountability whatsoever. And at BravoCon, it was the same tune. She didn't take any accountability for implying that Toya has something to do with Anila's robbery, as well as her cheating on Eugene. And y'all know how long-winded Quad can be. She's now giving her word salad about why she perpetuated the rumor. And of course, the reason was to get back at Toya for whatever she did. I'm confused because just like Toya says, she never repeated the rumor of Quad sleeping with a married man. That was her good homegirl, Heavenly, who said that. And then Simone repeated it. 
I really think this just goes back to last season when Toya had so much to say about Quad's apartment. I mean, new townhouse. Also, if Toya did perpetuate that rumor about Quad, don't you think producers would have caught that on camera? Because you know they love catching them in lies. So now when Neela's in the hot seat now about what she said on the show with Quad setting her up. She said that she didn't know that the, the other Indian girl, I think her name was Zane, she didn't know she was going to the party. But Quad invited her. She said her friend Zane just called her for a ride that night. And I'm not sure, but y'all can correct me in the comments. Didn't production catch Anila telling Zane about the rumor to say it at the party? Y'all let me know, because I can't remember, and I don't feel like going back. So now Anila and Toya are going at it, and Anila is losing. I mean, she is in the wrong at the end of the day, but I don't think it's fair that it's all being placed on Anila, because Heavenly and Quad were definitely the ones perpetuating that rumor. But Toya seems to be more mad at Anila, and I can see why, because Anila was actually her friend. But I won't forget the season that Anila came in, Toya was the reason why they fell out because Toya was treating her like shit. So I get that. But you know what this is really about is Anila trying to get back at Toya and Anila and Kwa creating a friendship solely out of their mutual dislike of Toya. So after that, the ladies take a lunch break, we fall into their trailers, and we see Anila and Quad going at it because they're in the same trailer. Anila confronts Quad for throwing her under the bus for doing the same thing she did. She tells Quad that she needs to own up to what she did, but Quad ain't doing that. And I feel bad for Anila because she really has no one in her corner at this point. So I'm really curious as to how she's going to navigate next season if she decides to come back. So all the ladies are back on set, and the next reel is dedicated to Heavenly versus Contessa. After the reel, Andy is asking the whole cast Regina George-type questions about Heavenly, like how many of you have been talked about on Heavenly's platform? How many of you have personally felt attacked by Heavenly? Everyone raises their hands. I mean, she's a horrible person. But fortunately for Heavenly, horrible people make great reality television. They're not talking about Heavenly's YouTube, and according to her, she said she didn't hear from Contessa about this. Like, afterwards, she was just completely blindsided that this bothered Contessa. And of course, Contessa said this is a lie. Heavenly's still sticking to her argument that Contessa was the one dogging her husband all last season. You did that, but just because I talk about it on my platform, you're getting mad at me. Don't talk about your husband if you don't want me to talk about it, if you don't want anybody to talk about it. Now, even though that may be the case, Contessa is actually your friend, and you talking about it on your YouTube gives it more weight than me talking about it on my YouTube. So, of course, Contessa has a right to feel pissed about that. They're really going back and forth now. They're arguing, getting louder. Contessa calls Heavenly a clown, and then they're calling each other bitches. Andy has clearly lost control in this moment and is over it. After things calm down, though, Simone then breaks it down for Heavenly in a better way than Contessa did over why she's upset. And it looks like Heavenly receives that, but she says that if she would have known that it hurt Contessa, she would have stopped. Andy then follows up on that and asks Heavenly, why don't you just stop then? And I'm like, because she does not care. She does not care about most of these women on the cast. I'm trying to think, who is Heavenly really friends with on the show? She's friends with Jackie, definitely, but she'd still be clowning Jackie. Pepperidge Farm remembers, I think it was one or two seasons ago, where she compared Jackie's body to that of a little boy. Yeah, some friend. Andy then mentions to Heavenly that this has been a common theme of you talking about the ladies behind their back. And then we see, like, you know, ever since she started on this show, you know, she's been in trouble because of what she said. And I'm like, she's not going to change. There's no growth with Heavenly. Heavenly's going to be the same on season 10 coming up like she was on season 9 and prior. So now the ladies take another break. They're all backstage now watching the husbands about to be interviewed. They're really about to give us this segment. They could have cut this part out, but I'm going to review some of it anyway. So now we have all the husbands sitting around Andy in a hyper-masculine fashion. And the first topic they touch on is Eugene and Kieran and the whole Halloween mover situation. Eugene still says he didn't think it was a joke. He thought it was offensive. Eugene says he does not find him moving multiple times funny. 
Well, I'm sorry, it is. Like, it is unintentionally funny that y'all had to move six times in eight seasons. That is crazy and unheard of. Now, Eugene can feel how he feel about it, but I honestly think Dr. Karen didn't mean any malice behind it. Like, all you gotta do now, Eugene, is for you and Toya next Halloween to dress up as burglars and then y'all be even. Andy then asked Karen, does he think he should have apologized sooner? He says, nope. And then we're left on the cliffhanger and that is where part two ends. Let's just move on to part three. So part three continues with them talking about the whole mover situation and Curtis surprisingly enters the chat and tells Eugene, well, you know, a couple of seasons back, you know, when he had his infidelity thing, Eugene made a joke about that and Curtis said he didn't appreciate it given how sensitive the issue was at the time. He has a fair point, but Eugene tries to make the point that they went all out on the movers joke. At the end of the day, they all talk about each other. Eugene, I think, was highly sensitive about the situation situation, he'll get over it. You getting paid to be on reality TV, you gotta roll with the punches sometimes. Eugene has then asked his perspective on his relationship with Toya. I mean, he gives some type of diplomatic answer, saying that couples go through this, he loves his wife very much, blah, blah, blah. They then move on, and it's mostly fluff questions that Andy's asking the husbands while the ladies watch backstage. We then get to Scott, Contessa's husband, and why are we asking about his music aspirations? He then proceeds to get up and perform a rap he prepared. It's like a song he dedicated to Contessa, who is encouraging this? I mean, it is kind of funny, but it's given midlife crisis. Thankfully after that, we have all the couples back on stage and quad. The first topic of discussion is the whole ethical non-monogamy conversation that they were having. Andy kind of re-asked the cast this question. Of course they're not for it, but I was a little turned off by Scott's response to this because I think they were talking about threesomes and having two women. He said there's nothing ethical about having two men and a woman. I just thought that was ignorant. We then get to Toya's comment she made implying that Eugene has a small dick. She tries to clarify and say that she meant that in marriage, you know, you're having sex with the same person. It doesn't get any different. Like, it just starts to get lame. And I'm like, uh, I mean, I'm not sure which is worse. Like, saying that the sex gets lame or that your man dick is small. Now, Andy, you ain't shit for asking Eugene, does he have a humiliation kink? with Toya embarrassing him throughout the seasons. I thought that was really unnecessary to ask. So while we're on the topic about how Toya treats Eugene, Quad is now in the hot seat for the comments that she said on the show as well as on social media. To sum up what Quad has said about Eugene, she basically called him a doormat and has also attacked his manhood. Eugene says he takes offense to Quad's comments more than Toya's, and now him and Quad are going back and forth. Eugene calls Quad miserable, and then Toya jumps in and says, don't address my man ever. You go get yourself a man to address a man. Ooh. Quad then tells Toya, Toya, you think I can't get a man? Toya's like, I don't give a fuck, because you ain't got one now. All right, Toya. Oh, oh shit. Toya ain't plain. She is sick of Quad's shit. After that argument dies down, they move on to Contessin, Heavenly, and their men. Now, Dr. Damon is cool or whatever, but it seems like he subscribes to the same tired gender roles that his wife does. Him saying things like he don't address the women and like the men are more level-headed. I really do think he subscribes to that whole patriarchy. I think he thinks women should be submissive to men, etc. And I don't think he's a bad guy. It's probably just how he was raised. But I just hope for him and Heavenly sake that he don't have any gay kids. Mm. Anywho, it looks like Contessa's issue with them as a couple is they never picked up the phone to try to reconcile. We found out from Heavenly that Madeline Quad inserted herself in this and just made it worse. She then apologizes yet again for her YouTube, even though it's still up and running and she still talks about the ladies. We then get to questions about Dr. Damon Daddy checking Heavenly, and Heavenly assures everyone that their relationship is fine. 
But then Kwa tries to address Damon and ask him, what does he think about Heavenly talking about everybody, apologizing, and then just doing it all over again? He's kind of stumped, of course, but then Heavenly tells Quad, don't address my man. Don't address, you address me. Again, here we go with the mindset of a woman shouldn't address a man. Andy, however, thinks it's a good question and wants to know Damon's perspective. So Damon proceeds to answer the question posed by the white man instead of the black woman. Anyway, he gives some diplomatic response and it seems like he has no problem with Heavenly being a mean, insidious bullfrog. So now the men are dismissed from the stage and I'm thinking, there's still more to go? <laughs> this really didn't need to be three parts. This could have been two solid parts and I would have been fine with that. So then the next reel is dedicated to all the sex talk that was had during the season. I gotta say, like out of everything I review, I would say Married the Medicine has the most conversations about sex. Now be that as it may, I don't care to hear this discourse and I don't really care to hear about any of these ladies' sex lives, so we're gonna move on. So now we get to the part where Andy asks all the ladies to reflect on the season. The only thing that stood out to me is Anila saying that she hopes to reconcile with Toya, but I don't see that happening. Afterwards, we then see Andy bring out a bunch of fine shirtless black men with champagne so the ladies can do a toast to the season, and that is where the reunion ends. I would give the reunion, mm, I'd give it a B minus, and then overall, I would give the season a B plus. Definitely better than season eight. I enjoyed the season overall. As for the cast, um, next season, I don't mind if they bring all of them back, plus Audra. But it's really going to be hard for me to see them bringing Anila back because she just doesn't fit in with the group anymore. And all the relationships she had with the women don't really seem that great now. So I'll be surprised if she comes back. But anyway, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the reunion and the season as a whole. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all for the next episode. Bye.